Okay, hi everybody. So once again, uh, we're looking at limits and we're looking at the epsilon delta definition of a, of a limit and the fact that if you're taking the limit as x approaches c and, uh, and we know that that equals l or at least we're, we're guessing that it equals some limit l that means that if we take the absolute value of f of x minus l and we set that less than some epsilon okay, some tolerance and we can make that as small as we want that's, that's the key to this, we can make that as small as we want we want to show that no matter what we pick for our epsilon here, that that implies that there's a delta. So as long as I'm uh, within delta of, of that C, of that value right there, as long as the X that I pick is close enough to C, I can get my F of X to be close enough to L to be within that tolerance. I just want to show that that tolerance implies that the existence of that guy right there, the delta. Now, we've already looked at this with um, linear functions. I don't want to spend too much more time on this. I want to talk more about kind of the, some of the implications of, of what a limit is and, and some more efficient ways of doing this. But I want to talk really quickly right now, show you an example of, of a quadratic and, and how you might do this with a quadratic function. So uh, I'm going to let f of x uh, be kind of my go-to right now, my go-to parabola, which is uh, x squared plus 5x plus 6. And that's just because this is x plus 2, x plus 3. Just an easy one here. And so now let's find uh, the limit or let's verify that the limit as x goes to, let's just make it 4, uh, you know, 4, 5, 6, whatever, of, of our function here, f of x. Uh, if we plug that in, 4 squared, 16, 22, 20, so what is that? That's going to be 22 plus 20, so 42. So we've got that our limit here is going to be 42. Now we're going to use epsilon delta to show that that's actually true. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that x squared plus 5x plus 6 minus 42, that should be less than some epsilon. Okay, now we're going to show that this implies a statement about x minus uh, c, the value that we're approaching here. Or at least that I can... I can go from here and get that value right there, that expression right there. So now here's what we'll do. First of all, we're going to simplify that a little bit. So x squared plus 5x, now that's going to be 6 minus 42, so negative, negative 36 less than epsilon. Okay, now we're going to drop those absolute values here. And what that implies when we do that is that x squared plus 5x minus 36 is going to be between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. Okay, now that might take you a little bit here just to remember that. Now that's something that we're assuming you've, you've gone over, that you've looked at before, okay, that, that that has to be true, that if the absolute value of this expression is less than some number, then that means, okay, the if it's negative, it's closer to the zero. If it's positive, again, closer to the zero. So it's got to be in between those two extreme values there. Now, whether you like it or not, this is what we got to do. What we're going to do is we're going to complete the square on this. So I've already got, there's no, uh, sorry, the, the coefficient here is one, so we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to take half of five and we're going to square that. So I'm going to add 25 over 4, then I'm going to subtract immediately 25 over 4, uh, minus my 36 right there, and that's going to be less than epsilon. Now, the reason why we want to do this, if, if you think back to how we did this with linear functions, what made that so easy is x only showed up like once in the expression. Here it shows up twice. It's got a quadratic term and a linear term. Oh, I just, I'm not thrilled with that. So I'm going to rewrite it so that I only see the x showing up the once. And I do that by completing the square. So this little bit here becomes x plus, that's not great, but 5 over 2. I mean, okay, that's not ideal, but anyway. And then negative 25 over 4 minus 36. Okay, uh, well, negative, uh, sorry, 36 here. If I multiply that by 4, I'm just going to go off to the side here. That's going to be uh, 4. 144, so it's going to be 144 over 4. And if you put negative 25, so that's going to be negative 169 over 4. Okay. Okay, good. So there's, there's our value. Uh, if you want to think of it in, this in these terms here, that is the y-coordinate of the vertex of that parabola. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do, notice I've got this little string of inequalities here. I'm going to move the 169 over 4 to the outside. Now, if it was, if the inequality was just that, I would bring the 169 over 4 over. If the inequality was just this, I would bring the 169 over 4 over. Either way, if I eliminate that, move that away from that, that middle expression here, it is going to be um, positive 169 over 4 minus epsilon on this side, positive 169 over 4 plus epsilon on this side. Right. Now, I am going to take the square root of everything here, okay? Essentially to get rid of this here. Now, I got to be careful though. Uh, when I take the square of an object and then take the square root of it, bear in mind that this will always be a positive result here. And then when you take the square root, the square root is naturally going to produce a positive result. Ultimately, what that does here is that really means that I'm looking at the absolute value of that x plus 5 over uh, 2. Now that's still going to be the square root of 169 over 4 minus epsilon. This is the square root of 169 over 4 plus epsilon. Okay, good. Now, uh, I am wanting this to be, I'm, like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come up with an expression here for x less than some delta here. So what I'm going to do here is, and I'm going to focus on this part right here because it's starting to have the structure that I'm looking for. I hope you can see that right there. Okay. Uh, when you're working with inequalities, sometimes it, you've got a little bit more freedom here. You can kind of, as long as it, it's satisfying that relationship I'm looking for, I can kind of grab that here. I, I like what I'm seeing right here. So that's, that's really what we're going to do. We're going to focus on this part right here. The absolute value of x plus 5 over 2 less than the square root of 169 over 4 plus epsilon. So I've got this reduced down to this value and it's, it's still in terms of epsilon over here. Okay, so I, I've got this idea uh, developing here. Now, when I write it like this, okay, bear in mind that what this means, again, because of that absolute value there, this means that this is like saying this is negative root 169 over 4 plus epsilon is less than x plus 5 over 2, which is less than positive root 169 over 4 plus epsilon. Again, we're, we're splitting up that absolute value because I, when I took the square root here, another absolute value popped out. So I got I to gotta deal with that one. And then I do the same thing. What I'm going to do is I am going to move, oh, sorry, I'm not going to move that 5 over 2 up. Sorry, I'm, I'm almost at my goal here. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. I'm not going to add the, uh, sorry, subtract the 5 over 2 from both sides. What I'm going to do here is, uh, remember, I want this to be uh, x minus 4. That's, that's my goal. Up here, let's not lose sight of where we're going here. Uh, I want to show that I've got x minus c is less than some delta here which is greater than zero. Well, the, the C that I'm approaching is four. I, I want this to look like X minus four here. So let's take a look here. I've got X plus five over two. Uh, okay, I want, okay, I'll just do this off to the side here. I want X plus five over two, okay, to be equal to X minus four. I want those to be the same here. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I want that 5 over 2. I want that 5 over 2. I'm going to subtract, uh, what are we going to do here? If I was to add 4 to that, okay, it'll be 8 over 2, so 13 over 2. Okay, okay. So what I'm going to do now to, to both sides of, uh, sorry, all, all three of these things here, I am going to actually subtract, okay, uh, 13 over 2 from both from all three of these different parts here. So I'm going to get um, negative root 169 over 4 plus epsilon, and I'm going to subtract 13 over 2. When I subtract 13 over 2 from 5 halves, I am going to get minus 4. And this is going to be 
root 169 over 4 plus epsilon minus 13 over 2. Okay, good. I, now that I've got this, this x minus 4, I've got my x minus c there. Uh, this is awesome. I've, I've, now I've got these horrible, ugly little expressions here, but that's okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the absolute value, because remember, I, in, my, in the definition of the limit, it's the absolute value of the x minus 4. So now I'm going to give myself a little bit of space here. When I do that, Okay, I have to come up with some sort of relationship here. I need this to be less than some value here. Now, now watch this. You run into a little bit of difficulty here, okay, because this and this here, if you take the absolute values, those could be different, different numbers here. It's not like these two values are exactly the same. Okay, uh, think of it like this. Let's say I had like negative 9 less than x less than 3. As soon as you take the absolute value, like the absolute value of 9 is, becomes greater than the 3 here. It's not like that, that's the maximum here. So what I'm going to do here is in order to guarantee that this, that this works, I simply want x minus 4 to be less than the, the maximum okay, of either the absolute value of negative root 1, uh, whoops, I'm not copying that out right. I want this to be less than the maximum of either one's negative one's uh, square root 169 over 4 plus epsilon minus 13 over 2, okay, or the absolute value of the square root of 169 over 4 plus epsilon minus 13 over 2. Okay, I'm going to take both of those. I, I want it to be just whatever the maximum is, I'm going to guarantee that that x minus 4 is less than that, and then I'm, I, I'm covered here. So therefore, I'm going to let my delta be equal to the maximum of the absolute value of negative root 169 over 4 plus epsilon, all under the radical there, minus 13 over 2, oops, or the positive 169 over 4 plus epsilon, whoops, sorry, minus 13 over 2, all in absolute values here. So that's how I'm going to define it. I know that's a little messy there. Whoops. Whoops. Other way. I know it's a little bit messy here. And it is complicated. It is a complicated idea to, to work uh, through this, this kind of a limit here. But just to show you that that's kind of how that would work. What you would do is you would start it the way we've, we've done it normally. You'd, you'd plug in that limit there, subtract it. And the trick here is you're going to complete the square. Okay, you're going to complete the square to, to get that into that expression, basically so that I can carve off the, the little pieces and I'm, then I'm just left with this guy right here, which is, which is what I wanted. I want this little single binomial here with x and some value. And then I can make that look like the number that I'm interested in just by adding or, or subtracting the appropriate value from, from both sides of the inequality. Okay. And then I simply, when I take the absolute value, I'm simply going to let the, the delta here be the maximum of that. So as long as I'm within that little range there, I know, as long as I'm within that range, that up here, uh, my function will be within eps, uh, epsilon of that limit. Okay, it is complicated. That's about as far as I want to go with this. So now uh, we go back to the, when we go back to the lessons here, we'll, we'll continue to go on forward and, and look at other applications of limits.